Praise the Lord. Back here in our makeshift studio, uh, here, uh, preaching the Word of God. Welcome back. It's Thursday evening, March 26th. Uh, let's have church. Hope you're being blessed um, by these sermons, that these uh, Bible studies that we're uploading. Um, hope they're a blessing to you tonight. Um, before we begin, let's pray tonight. Heavenly Father, we're thankful tonight for this opportunity to bring your word forth tonight. God, we ask that you would touch the very hearts of those that are live, that are listening out there tonight. Help them, Lord, to receive all that you have for them tonight, for their lives. To receive your word with gladness. Help them to be encouraged tonight. In Jesus' name let it be done. Amen and amen. We're going to be in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30, beginning to read in verse 1. By reason it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag, burnt it with fire. They had taken the women captives and that were therein. They, they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city and behold, it was burned with fire. Their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. And David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed for the people, for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons, for his daughters. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Is God. And tonight I'd like to use that last verse as a text tonight. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself and the Lord his God. Tonight we'd like to preach on encouragement. Encouragement. No one in the entire Bible is a greater example of being able to encourage himself in God than the man by the name of David. When you read some of the Psalms that he began to write, you are amazed that he starts writing a song while he's discouraged, and he ends up with the same song, Encouraged. He learned how to see the light in the dark days. We're going to check out a few pages of David's life from a time when it was hard for him to love life. We're going to consider one particular incident when stress confronted David. When problems began to pile up even before solutions from the previous uh, problems were even solved. I want to set the stage uh, tonight for you. David is running from his own king, King Saul who is envious of him, hunting him down and, and trying to kill him. Saul is eaten up with envy that he mistakenly thinks David is trying to take his throne. So he tries to take David's life. And David has to flee to the nation of the Philistines, enemies of Israel, where he and his soldiers fight for the Philistines as mercenaries. But one day the Philistines begin to go to fight the Israelites, and David and his army are sent home. When they arrived at their temporary home in Ziklag, they find that the Amalekites, a band of thieves, have raided their town, burnt their homes to the ground, and taken their wives and their children hostage. And David and his men were already tired and hungry. They thought that they were coming home to chill out with their families and to rest and get some food, but instead, they come home to a scene of emptiness, desolation, and loss. These strong warriors, these grown men, David's mighty men, were so overwhelmed by their sorrow that the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 4, Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. It was hard to love life on that day for these men. These strong men cried until they couldn't cry anymore. Maybe you've had those, they, those days are like that, when the sun refused to shine. Days when your heart aches so much, 
you wish you could imagine yourself to be somewhere else. But wait, though it doesn't seem possible, things even get worse. In 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6, the Bible says, And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. These men looked uh, around at what was left of their homes. And as, they, as the smoke rose and, uh, from the ashes, so, so does their heart and their anger begin to rise up. They need an outlet for the emotions. And they choose to take things out on their leader. This was one of the most difficult situations imaginable. David away from his real home, chased by a mentally ill king, living like a vagabond, forced to side with the enemy. And now his own men speak of rising up against him. I want you to feel the desperation of his, this dark time in David's life. One reason I want you to feel, uh, I want you to get David's uh, feeling here is to know that you're not alone when you begin to face these feelings of desperation. This was rock bottom for David. This was the end of his rope. David had no one. His family wasn't there to console him, and his associates here lost their grip to the point that they even wanted to kill him. Most people would have been overwhelmed by these turn of events. Most would have thrown in the top. But in one of the most dramatic 180 degree turns in the history of the Bible, it states in 1 Samuel chapter 30, in verse 6, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. This is one of the many reasons you've got to love the word of God. This is why you've got to love being a child of God. And if you're not a child of God, you ought to become one tonight. Even in life's darkest days, there's still hope. There's a source of encouragement. You don't have to believe the circumstances and what uh, they look like when you can believe instead uh, that God is going to work things out somehow. And David became so encouraged in the Lord that he began to rally up his troops and went after the Amalekites. He beat them down. We covered every family member safe and sound that had been, that had been taken captive by these band of thieves. This is one of the most impressive stories in the word of God of a personal turnaround anywhere. And the word of God gives us the key insight into how it was accomplished. David encouraged himself and the Lord. He is God. Amen. He encouraged himself tonight. And the Lord is God. How did he do that, preacher? How can I do that? How do you encourage yourself in God to be a winner when everyone and everything around you sounds out the message that is hopeless? When even your family members and your friends are aren't willing or able to encourage you, which is the situation David was in. How do you encourage yourself in God tonight? God wants you to identify with David tonight, not only in his sorrow, but also in his breakthrough. I want to share a few things with you tonight that will help you be a great encourager or begin to be encouraged in your heart and in your life. Number one, put worship. Put worship before warfare. Put worship before warfare. David is known as a mighty man of war. His legendary entry into armed combat takes place against a giant named Goliath. With a sling and a stone, an experience of protecting his father's flocks uh, against animals like lions and bears, David defeats Goliath. The soldiers in both the Philistine and the Israelite armies are, are view it in disbelief. A little shepherd boy with a sling and a stone kills their enemy. And when David knocks Goliath down with that stone, he then takes the giant's sword and cuts his very head off. After that, David joins Saul's army and becomes so well known as a warrior that they begin to sing songs about him. 
But don't miss the point of, of David's entire life. Before anything else, David, David here, was a first-rate worshiper. Here in our text, David didn't just get angry and go off to fight the Amalekites to reclaim his family and his property. He stepped up or he began to stop. He stopped and began to spend some time with the Lord his God. This is the most important principle in all of this life. Spending time with God should be your first priority if you're going to stay encouraged in the midst of the demands of life. You need to spend time with the Lord every single day because he made you. How do you spend time with God? There is a life of prayer and a prayer life. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17 to pray without ceasing. Well, how can you pray, preacher, without stopping? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 8 and verse, oh, excuse me, Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20. It says, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. If Jesus is with you, talk to him. He's there right by your side. He's there protecting you. He's there looking over you. Prayer is not the position of your body has been served. It's the position of your heart. Let him know that you love him. Ask him to help you through the day to make uh, right decisions for him. If you're working on a job, ask him to help you do your job to the best of your ability in him. If, uh, through the day, ask him to strengthen you. Ask him to guide you. If someone comes around you that uh, you know is going to bring you down, ask the Lord to give you a word of encouragement for that person. Sometimes you got to have that word of encouragement for a lot of people in this life. Because sometimes people come to you, sometimes they say things to you that get you down. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 and 7 and 8 and 9, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, Whatsoever things that are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. That type of prayer. It's called a life of prayer. That's praying without ceasing or stopping. Jesus shared in John chapter 14, verse 13 and 14, And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Seems like the last few uh, sermons and Bible studies are, uh, I've been sharing that Jesus has shared these scriptures. You shall ask anything in my name. I will do it. Ask him tonight. Ask him to encourage you. Ask him to help you encourage yourself in the Lord. Ask him tonight. Also, there's a prayer life. Taking time out of your busy day to get alone with the Lord your God. It can be three to five minutes. Just thanking him for what he's doing in your life and the life of others. Now, if you will take three to five minutes to thank God for his goodness and stop to pray for yourself and others, you'll find out that those three to five minutes will, be, will begin to turn into 30 to 50 minutes because you'll begin to lose all track of time because there's so much to pray for, so many people to pray for. So many things to bring before the Lord. And God is ready and right there to listen to you. The Lord created us to worship him. He deserves our worship. He's worthy of our time and our attention. Your struggles are not the center of your life. You're going to have to fight 
for your life. This life. Sometime. But before you fight, you need to find time for God. My pastor shared one time, he says, when life pushes you, push back. Can you imagine a soldier marching off to war without proper training, without having the right guns, without having ammunition, without being part of a master battle plan? A soldier without those things is bound to fail. But a prepared soldier is a victorious soldier. And your preparation for a spiritual warfare is time spent, well time spent with God. My pastor made the statement, preparation is never wasted time. Also, ask God for direction. Ask God for direction. In 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 7 and 8, And David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephah. And Abiathar brought thither the ephah to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. The priest wore the holy vest to symbolize the presence of God. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13 and 14, it says, Wherefore, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on, having on the breastplate of righteousness. That breastplate is not your own righteousness, but the Lord's. We have to learn that it's not through our own ability and our own strength that makes us winners. But God is the only one that makes us winners tonight. It's his righteousness that keeps all of us going tonight. It's the word of God which is in Jesus Christ. Or which is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the word of God. What I'm saying is David was asking God what to do. David wasn't about to go off in his own ability. Not having consulted with his God. Instead he was going to leave for battle with confidence. Knowing the will of Almighty God. First, he regained his composure by worshiping God. Now he makes his plans by consulting God. If you start off worshiping God, that's great. But don't forget to follow God's instruction if you want to stay encouraged. Sometimes we get the worship part right, but stress gets us so messed up that we forget to ask God for direction. We need to know what God wants us to do, not what our human nature wants us to do, not what others say we should do, but what does the Lord say? What does he want us to do? Look at where the Bible says our, our joy comes from in times of stress. In Psalms chapter 119, verse 143, trouble and anguish have taken hold on me, yet thy commandments are my delights. Your joy in times of trouble is not going to come from the conclusions you draw on your own. It's going to come from the commands God has given each one of us. You need to find out what God tells you to do and then do it. The adversary of your soul, the devil, Satan, will try to give you advice as well. Satan's purpose in offering other forms of counsel is to keep you from coming to God for direction. Don't fall for it. There are only two types of advice in this life. Godly advice and ungodly advice. And the Bible promises blessings for not following ungodly advice. Psalm chapter 1 and verse 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. You must get godly advice if you want to stay encouraged. Ungodly advice will only mess your thinking up and eventually lead you to more misery. Also, treat others right. 
Treat others right. What does, we, what does that have to do with encouraging ourselves and God? What, what, what does treating others have to do with, with that? A lot of times when your life gets hot, you're tempted to do what David's troops did. You're tempted to take it out on somebody or someone else. Misery loves company. You're in the pit of despair, and instead of spending time with God and asking him what to do, you do something stupid. You're hurting, so you hurt someone else. The phrase is true, which says, hurt people, hurt people. Say it one more time. Hurt people, hurt people. What happens after the situation passes, you've, you've had time to reflect on, uh, on having behaved badly toward um, someone else because you were in pain. Now you have another problem. You have to mend the fences that you took down in your anger and your pain. So do yourself a favor. When troubles come, be aware of yourself and act accordingly. Do what's right. In the eyes of Almighty God. David was aware of this principle when he left to hunt down the Amalekites that had taken his family. 200 men in his army of 600 were so tired that they couldn't go on. So he let them rest. He told them to stay with the stuff. And when he returned with the spoils of battle, he gave them an even portion with the 400 that fought the battle. This even became a rule in Israel after that point. If you went off to battle and someone else kept the stuff, you had to share the spoils of the battle with the ones who stayed with the supplies even if they didn't fight. David encouraged, he encouraged in God, behaved like God. Dark days can be real tests of our behavior. If you want to encourage yourself in God, you need to act like God would act. It's been shared, what would Jesus do? Express kindness toward others. Love them in spite of their failures. Don't take your anger and frustration out on them. David faced more challenges in life after this incident. But you know something? That's life. We all face challenges. Life's a challenge. It can be very discouraging. But the key to staying encouraged is to walk with God and live according to God's instructions. When we deviate from that, we all lose our joy. How about it tonight? Are you depressed and sad? Are you sad on the things that are transpiring around your life? The Lord is saying to you tonight, lift up your eyes unto the hills from which cometh your help. Your help is coming from the Lord God of heaven. Be encouraged and look to him. God knows what you're going through. In these times, we all need a loving God to love us and encourage us. Be well, saints. Pray and ask God, the Lord God in heaven, to help you tonight. Be encouraged. God bless you is our prayer.